This is BC Spritch, your look at the province's burgeoning distilling culture. What is happening, BC Spritch? Welcome back to another grand tasting, another weekly tasting. I'm back. I've been doing Spirit a Day every day. We're coming on to number 100 fairly shortly. Um, but I haven't been doing a lot of Spirit of the Days. Uh, not Spirit of the Day, sorry. Uh, a lot of, of the, uh, the weekly tastings. Just purely because it's been difficult to get stuff during COVID here on the island. Um, and while I have a whole bunch of stuff on the, behind me, that's perfect for Spirit of the Days. I, it's hard for me to get small distilleries. About 20 distilleries I can't get here on the island just for shipping reasons or logistics or whatever. Um, so, I, and then to get something that you can build in a whole tasting of, of like three or four, five things that all complement each other is very difficult. So the other day I did a tasting with the Gillespie Fine Spirits Lemoncello and I got a comment on the YouTube channel, which please subscribe. Ding, um, about doing a lemon cello off. And I did that back in episode 11, I think, which is back in April last year ish, I think. Um, so it's been some time. So I went out for a drive, picked up a few things. And I was like, oh, am I just going to do what I got new this week or stuff like that? And I was just like, oh, what am I going to, what am I going to do? And I went to Vessel and I saw this lovely new little thing, Tofino Lemoncello. And so I was like, you know what? This is serendipitous. We have to do a lemon off, like a lemon and cello off. Um, but I'm going to call it a lemon off or a lemon and orange or a citrus off or something like that. Um, because I've got a few different things. So we've got four lemons and an orange. Sort of like a, a old school poker machine. Ding, 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 ding. And you lose because you didn't get the cherry. Um, one is, first up is going to be a citrus gin. Now the citrus gin is going to be from the Moonshine Spirit. So the Moon Underwater guys here in Esquimalt or Vic West, depending on your nomenclature for this region. Um, so I've been tasting a lot of citrus gins. If you can see me right behind me, let me see if I can do it again. Bang. Discovery Street Gin from um, Phillips, which is their citrus gin. I'm really enjoying the gin forward with um, the, the the sort of lemon punched up as a botanical instead of being an individual um, flavor note. So on the nose, I'm getting like sweet candied lemon, which is really, really tasty. But it's like if you did a candied lemon with a botanical mix, which I think would be a really cool syrup, actually. Um, like a lemon syrup with a, a botanical like juniper and the usual sort of baking spices and stuff like that. On the palate, it's sweet candied lemon in the front, but then it just kicks back to that juniper forward with gin in the back, which is a little bit different to the other citrus gins we've been doing. A lot of that's been gin forward with citrus in the back. But it's this beautiful, like, sort of lemon pomelo, a little mandarin in there, like a, a, a medley of wonderful little citrus there. I think if you whammed, like, put through this together with some Esquimalt dry vermouth, so Esquimalt on Esquimalt, uh, stir it down with a little dash of the bitted sling lemon Marrakesh bitters and twist a lemon, you're in for a show. So next up, two limoncellos I haven't done before. So first up, we have got the Arbutus Stilling. Now I want to do a little education for everybody here. You can see this beautiful sediment into it. Um, cloudiness, sediment in liqueurs is a good thing. It means that it hasn't been overly filtered, had chemicals added to it to make it like stay clear um, because there's sort of this, this expectation. It's sort of the same as fruit and vegetables. Fruit and vegetables don't look like a carrot. Doesn't look like a carrot when it comes out of the ground. It can be ugly and gross. But we only see, ever see carrots that look like carrots in the in the uh, in the carrot aisle at the at the grocery store. Same thing with liqueurs. Hazy liqueurs means that it's natural and real. Oh. This one is close to a traditional style limoncello that like you normally like. If you've tasted some a couple of the the bigger brand limoncellos, that sort of very straightforward, beautiful sweet lemon. Straight up. 28% alcohol, which is about the same for most Arbutus liqueurs. I'm a massive fan of Arbutus liqueurs. I think they're super underrated. Um, but that really fragrant candy sort of lemon that is just so spectacular. So it's got peels and juice in this one. Um, on the palate, a little bit more cloyingly sweet than some of the other liqueurs I've done with them. Got a nice like rindy finish like if that makes sense like a lemon rind dryness in the back the one thing with lemon chillers that you have to understand is like it's the same thing with the maros and vermouth and anything from that sort of mediterranean region that greece and stuff like that 
a lot of this stuff has been homemade for generations by mums, grandmas, grandfathers, so on and so forth. So when you taste a lot of new, especially Mediterranean inspired ingredients, you should be looking for differences in the way that a village would be different, a household would be different, a region would be different. Same thing with Amaro's and Moose. Like we tend to get these big macro brands come to Canada and we, we sort of pin, pin in our heads that that's what that should taste like. When there's so many different uh, variations out there. Uzo is another one. Like we've done the Uki Raki, which is a Turkish inspired spirit, but like every little village would have a different Uzo and a different Raki back in that, in that region. So never always go into things with an open mind, especially limoncellos and amaros and bit and vermouths, because you may have not tasted something that tastes like that. that the producer has next up the, the serendipitous, the serendipitous reason we're doing this tasting today is the Tofino distillery limoncello. Didn't know they had it out, uh, for, Someone who's on social media all the time, it's really difficult when a distillery has no social media just to keep up with exactly what they're doing because they bring out all these cool stuff and I, I unless I'm at the liquor store every single day, I just miss it. On the nose, much more tart lemon. On the palate, this is different again, 28.5% alcohol. Not a lot of sugar, definitely lean into that really acidic, that tart lemon. Um, really fantastic. This is, it reminds me of um, suburban lemon, lemonade stand. Like that, that really freshly squeezed lemon juice, lemonade stand sort of feel to it. It's really that sort of really tart, sour, sweet, all mixed together, like having it on a cold, on a hot day, cold. It's like lemonade stand in a, in a bottle. That's one that you have to have. If you like to drink it, that was some soda. You got money. Okay, next up is sort of, I wouldn't say the benchmark, but it's definitely one that definitely is very spectacular in the city, in the in the province. It's the Woods Limoncello. Now I've done this one on Spirit of Day. So I, I had a few more oranges and lemons that I've done in the past. I'm gonna link that episode up. Um, but uh, the, Woods Limoncello I did a little while ago on the Spirit of Day. The cool thing with Woods is that they have a vacuum distill, distill, a vacuum still. Very similar to a rotovap if you've heard that. What it does is it sucks all the air out and creates a vacuum. Now when things are put under vacuum, they boil at a much lower temperature, which when things boil at a much lower temperature, a lot more flavors are extracted, very different subtle flavors. And this one has the addition of peppercorns and chilies. So again, a little bit different. now. It's like for peppercorns and chilies, everybody's like, but why in limoncello? Go to your flavor Bible. If you've got a copy, go to lemon. Chances are it's going to be peppercorns and chili peppers on that page saying paired perfectly with lemons. So I double date you to go and do that. On the nose, you get that sort of aromatic lemon, but aromatic lemon and pepper. On the palate, thirty percent higher alcohol again. Super aromatic lemon on this one. Still candy, still a little sweet lemon, but much more aromatic. I think that that peppercorn and the chili pepper really play well with this one in a big way. But when we start looking at each three, so the Arbutus Distillery, very sweet, classic limoncello. Like if you've tasted any sort of the big brands from Italy. This is going to be the same sort of flavor profile, that sweet candied lemon, fantastic sort of kick. The the uh, Tofino Distillery, guys, please get social media just so I can follow along with what you're doing and tag you, for God's sake. Um, but the Tofino Distillery Limoncello, tart, sour, sweet, all those things, that sort of suburban lemonade stand sort of uh, kick to it with some uh, alcohol in the kicker. Honestly, with soda or tonic would be money. Um, the limoncello from Woods, super aromatic, obviously from the vacuum, vacuum distillation, um, super aromatic, you gain all that flavor with the peppercorns and the chili, really complex, completely different ball game for that one. Now, last one I'm gonna play around, like show up with, this is the orange for today. So I've got a couple of oranges, but Manitou is, I think a super underrated orange. I think Manitou should be in every bar in the province if you're using Cointreau or Curacao, or dry Curacao, I think that you're missing out on Manitou. I don't think you've tasted it. It's an orange sumac liqueur. 
Sumac is a uh, indigenous herb to BC here. On the nose, it doesn't have a lot of flavor on the palate, but on the nose, this is sort of vinegary, orange, tartaric acid sort of feel to it. It's extremely hard to uh, express and uh, infuse. I've tried it. It is a nightmare. I've never been able to achieve it properly. These guys have. But being an orange and sumac, you're expecting it to be orange forward with that sumac being a, a play. And you get it straight away on the nose. On the nose, you're getting that acidic, that bright vinegary orange nose. Almost like if you pickled orange peel, which I've pickled oranges before. It's very, very similar. That sort of very apple cider vinegar sort of high note. Then it just goes into those curacao orange peels. Like just, I'm not sure if they're using curacao orange peels, but man, it's just curacao dried orange peels. On the palate, it goes from sweet navel through to like almost bitter, uh, bitter sour uh, curacao oranges. And then you get that beautiful sumac, like popping almost electricity on the top of your palate from this, this beautiful vinegary sort of tartaric acid orange on top of the palate. If you're making sidecars at home, if you're making white ladies, please, please, please get a bottle of Manitow and try it. You will not be disappointed. It's going to give you so much complexity to your drinks. I got like this, this with some lemon juice, shake constrained money. Um, so thank you so much for Neil for saying, let's do a lemon cello off because it really like made my day. Cause I got, I think I read that this morning. I'm like, Oh, I've got a few things. And then I saw the Tofino and then I saw the Arbutus and then I saw the moon underwater. I'm like, okay, yeah, we're going to do citrus and orange today. Um, Hope you enjoyed the episode, guys. Thank you very much for the support. Uh, I was going to announce it today, but I thought I'd give last night people to subscribe and, and comment a few times before I did a draw. Um, but for the next three weeks, I've done nine books in the last nine weeks. I've given away my own book, Great Northern Cocktails. I've given away Davin de Kirkham and Blair Phillips' book, uh, The Definitive Guide to Canadian Distilleries. I've given away um, Canadian Spirits by... Stephen Beaumont and Christine Zizmondo. Um, for the next three weeks, I might be able to push this a little bit longer if you twist my arm. Um, if you YouTube subscribe, ding, and then comment, I will, you can, if you win, you get to pick a shirt off the, the BC Spirits uh, store, whatever color, whatever size, whatever style, I'll send it to you and you get yourself a BC Spirits shirt. Um, I may even open that up to hats and whatnot. We'll see, but shirts to start with. Let's just start off easy with shirts. So what you gotta do, subscribe to YouTube, Leave a comment. For every comment you leave, you get an entry into the draw. So the more times you watch videos, the more times you comment, the more time chances you have to win. So tons of cool stuff coming up. Guys, thanks always for the support. I appreciate it. this passion project is a massive, uh, a massive amount of time and, and effort that I really enjoy doing. Just tasting all these BC spirits. I could literally open a craft bar right now if I just lean over this way, because it goes down below as well. So, but thank you so much. Hope you're enjoying the episodes. Spirit of Day, every single day. Number 100 coming up in two days, three days. Um, Going to be really fun. Hope you're enjoying everything, guys. Thanks a lot. I'll see you soon. Bye.